Hi, everybody. Um, so I just tweeted a few minutes ago the slides to this. Uh, if you want to follow along, because the colors on your screen are probably going to be much better than on these, because this is all about color. So I'm here to talk to you about color, specifically the fundamentals of color manipulation, tints, tones, and shades. Um, Paul Rand, one of the most influential graphic designers for me and probably for a lot of people, said that design is relationships. Grids and layout, typography, and of course color. Good use of color is nothing but establishing a series of relationships. So building upon Beth's uh, talk, I'm going to expand on a few foundations that I consider important for this topic for color mixing. RGB, um, the most widely used form of color representation for screens, as she said, also known as the additive color model, uses red, green, and blue light to produce over 16 million colors on screen. 16.7, as Beth said. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, an RGB color wheel is composed of a triad of primary colors, the obvious red, green, and blue, uh, and a secondary set that's made by combining these, these primaries, um, cyan, magenta, and yellow, and another set in between, and so on and so forth, until you have a, a flow of color. When we talk about hue, we're referring to what most people think of as pure color. If we flatten the RGB color wheel, we can see the strip organized by hues from red to magenta and, and so forth, uh, and the degrees that, that goes through, like, like Beth showed as well. Saturation, uh, the other important key factor, is the degree of purity of the color. When the color is mixed, in this case with white, like you see, the color becomes less saturated, less vibrant. And finally, value, which I think is the most relevant topic here, uh, because it literally um, shows how color can create relationships, is the lightness and darkness and all the steps in between a color. I'm using uh, white and black here, but it can be any color. And so when we look at something like this, um, similar to what you'd find in an image editing software, um, when selecting colors, we can see these elements come together. You can select the hue on the right side from 0 to 359 degrees, um, you can choose a saturation and a value or a lightness. Um, this is very similar, like Beth said, to HSL or HSV. Um, HSV stands for hue saturation value or hue saturation and lightness. With these fundamental concepts cleared, uh, we now have a common language to talk about color manipulation. So we're going to use those concepts as I move along. This is where these relationships come into play. You, you see here the topics of this talk. Tints, tones, and shades all come together. Let's break it down. So tints. A tint, uh, you tint a color when you add white to it, to a hue. Uh, or in RGB terms, when you add light to a hue. The more you add, the lighter it gets. The colors also desaturate as they lose that original hue vibrancy. So a red is in, in RGB, the values go from 0 to 255. So a red would be 255, 0, 0. If you bring the other two levels up at the same time, the red will become lighter. A tone is when you add a neutral gray to a color. A neutral gray is basically 50% between white and black, or RGB 128, 128, 128. You'll notice that the colors get muddy or desaturated more visibly here as we go down the, the scale. And last but not least, my favorite shade. Uh, you shade a color when you add black to it, or better yet, you remove light in RGB. So again, a red would be 255.00. It will go darker if you go down with a red channel. So a 128.00 would be kind of a, a dark blood red. Um, so how do, we bring this, uh, how do we bring this all together? We're starting to understand the dynamics we can have here with value and saturation. Um, we can use the, these techniques to create some harmony. Um, about a year and a half ago, by the, the 4.2 release cycle, I worked on a few changes to WP Admin that you see here, and you can visit that URL, um, bringing attention to the traditionally nat uh, neutral sea of grays you have there. Um, if you go to that URL, you'll see the announcement blog post about that a year and a half ago and my thoughts behind it and a little bit of explanation of, of uh, the process that went into that. So going through that process, I started digging deeper into the WP Admin CSS and found 174 individual color declarations in the CSF of CSS of w, WP Admin. 
um, thanks to Garth Mortensen, who helped me compile this list that you see here, in a kind of usable way, I started organizing them by hue and value. But at some point, as you can see, like a defrag of a hard drive back in the day, uh, I kind of lost patient and I just, I just let them be. Um, this is still very much a work in progress. Um, it's, it's kind of the big elephant in the room that, that has been hard to take on, and we call it the Fifty Shades of WordPress. <laughs> Um, so I'm doing what I can slowly, which I'm hoping tomorrow at Contributors Day you will come and join the design group and, and help with this kind of stuff. Um, but, but I can share you a little bit of the process here. So we started with the WordPress Blue, which is on the top right corner um, in this display, and then we tinted and shaded it, basically, uh, to create this gradient of colors. Somewhere down in, in the bottom right there, we isolated um, this dark gray, the, the highlighted one here, which it looks almost purple there. <laughs> but uh, this, that became the, the similar value to the, the sidebar of WP Admin. But it has a certain intention because it's, it, 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 it brings inspiration from the WordPress blue. With that, we tinted going down and we shaded going up to create a harmonic um, selection of colors. What you see here on the block uh, on the left, for example, the left column is the colors that are currently in WP Admin. So a total of all the girls you see here, wow, they look really blue there. Uh, they're not as blue. Um, the, the left columns are uh, the current uh, hues. Um, the, the right columns are the proposals for, for change. And basically what's happening here is we're figuring out, okay, this hex value has capitalization in one uh, declaration, the others doesn't. Or we use black or, ha uh, or hex 000, which is the same thing. So stuff like that, there's 174 colors because there's all these variants that are basically the same thing. Um, but um, we are trying to match the value of these, these different colors to a fewer number of, of actual shades. So we went from 19 colors just on this screen to only nine. If you squint your eyes, you can see the line between the two disappear and that's how we know it's the right value. And if you see the slides on your phone, this is gonna make so much more sense. Um, you can see a lot of the colors that are already proposed in the design handbook, which is this URL. And it's probably the best URL to find about this. Um, the 50 Shades of Grey project is just at the beginning and I'm going to need help with it. Um, so if you'd like to join tomorrow the core uh, design team uh, table at the Contributors Day, that would be awesome. Thank you so much.